Here we're going to derive a standard power reducing formula for the integral of sine to the n. And we're going to use the standard strategy of integration by parts, but this will be refined a little bit so that we have just a single equation. But maybe it's not super refined, maybe it's just a silly method. Post in the comments if you think this is better, worse, or the same in terms of aesthetics as the standard way of proving this result. Okay, so let's start by doing the following. I'm going to realize that the number 1 is the same thing as 1 over n plus n minus 1 over n. In other words, n over n. Then I'm going to think about a coefficient of 1 out here, which I'll break into those parts. So I have 1 over n, and then the integral as of sine nx dx plus n minus 1 over n, and then the integral of sine to the nx dx. So I haven't done anything. I've just split the number 1 up into these two things. And now we're going to set it up to start integration by parts. So I'll take this sine nx and split it into two pieces. So let's write it like this. We have 1 over n and then sine to the n minus 1x times sine x dx and then plus n minus 1 over n, the integral of sine to the nx dx. And now we're set up to attack this first integral with integration by parts. So let's see, maybe we would set this equal to u, and then we would set all of this bit equal to dv. But now using substitution and the chain rule, we see that du must be equal to n minus 1 times sine to the n minus 2x times cosine of x dx, because the derivative of sine is cosine. And then furthermore, if dv is sine x dx, then we know that v is equal to negative cos x dx. Okay, so between this stuff right here, which I've boxed in blue, and these two substitutions over here, which I starred in blue, along with the integration by parts formula, which says the integral of u dv is the same thing as uv minus the integral of v du, we can break this first integral into well, two parts. So let's see, we'll have one over n, that'll be out in front of everything, and then u times v. Let's notice that, that is sine n minus one x times negative cosine x. So I'll write this as negative sine n minus one of x times cosine of x. And then we have minus the integral of v du. Notice the minus sign will cancel with this right here. And that's going to leave us with something like this. We'll have plus n minus 1 times the integral of sine to the n minus 2x times cosine squared x. But now I'm going to take the opportunity to write that cosine squared as 1 minus sine squared x dx. And let's just reiterate that this 1 minus sine x came from cosine squared in this v du. Okay, so that's starting to look good. That's all of this first integral, but we still have this second integral. So this is plus n minus 1 over n times the integral of sine nx dx. Okay, so now let's expand this out a little bit. So we can take this minus sign here and have it combined with this 1 over n, leaving us with minus 1 over n. We have sine n minus 1 x cosine of x. And then we'll have plus n minus 1 over n, the integral of sine n minus 2 x dx. So we get that from this sine n minus 2 multiplying on this number 1. And then we'll have a minus n minus 1 over n integral of sine nx dx. And that comes from this n minus 1 multiplying onto this negative sine squared along with this sine to the n minus 2. So let's maybe sketch that out. This multiplication with the number 1 gives us this integral. And this multiplication with sine squared gives us this integral. And then furthermore, we can just bring this last integral down, n minus 1 over n, integral sine to the nx dx. And now let's look at what we've got. 
And notice that the last two terms are exactly the same up to a sign. But that means they'll cancel. We have negative this object plus that object. So if we add those together, we'll get zero. So in other words, those two cancel. And then we're left with just this bit right here, which is the standard power reducing formula for the integral of sine to the nx that you might find in a textbook. And that's a good place to stop.